Hi folks, in this episode I'm going to talk about Epsilon Core. Uh, well, what is the purpose? Well, as I just said in the previous episode, for some games the core uh, can be empty. Um, so this is a problem because it basically means for some games uh, there's no reasonable solution or stable solution. Um, well, stability is an important concept. It's more like, um, you know, a stronger version of Nash Equilibrium. Uh, but if you remember, almost all games have uh, Nash Equilibria, uh, whether it's in pure strategies or mixed strategies. So uh, one alternative or one approach, if when this is the case, when the game G has uh, an empty core, uh, we can look at some sort of an approximation. Uh, meaning, remember the, the core says no in uh, 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 coalition has incentive to deviate. Well, the epsilon core says, well, you know, some uh, coalitions may have incentive to deviate, but their incentive is not huge, all right? So it's sort of the incentive is bounded by some epsilon. So how do we formally define it? Well, for any epsilon, some positive number, we define the concept epsilon core of game G as uh, the set of payoff vectors where the total sum of the payoff of coalition C is greater than or equal to the worth of coalition C minus epsilon, all right? So remember the stability requires that this inequality should hold, but we relax this inequality by subtracting epsilon here because as I said, some coalitions may actually prefer, I mean, we may have, uh, we may have summation Xi is less than Vc, all right, but when I subtract this, so that basically means this coalition C actually wants to break up this grand coalition and form their own coalition uh, because that coalition is going to get a, a very high payoff uh, relative to the X uh, payoff vector. But when I subtract epsilon here, and if this is true, well, then the incentive of this coalition is not huge. It's just, you know, uh, you know, slightly uh, uh, less than uh, v the worth of C, for example. Well, obviously, epsilon can be anything, all right? I mean, for example, you can choose epsilon like almost, almost a very, very large, like almost infinite. Well, in this case, uh, probably everything, every payoff uh, vector is going to be in the epsilon core. Uh, so for that reason, what matters is uh, the smallest possible epsilon where, right, so this is exactly what we define, the epsilon star G is the infimum. So infimum is uh, sort of the minimum of a set, all right? But the thing is, uh, the min or max are not well-defined uh, objects when the set is, for example, not closed, all right? For example, if I look at uh, the set 0, 1 open interval, what is the minimum of this set? What is the minimum number in this set? It's not 0, okay, because 0 is not in this set. Don't forget. So minimum of this set is not well defined, all right? Not, does not exist, I mean. However, in this case, infimum of 0, 1 does exist, and it's 0. Because the infimum is basically, uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be in this set, it can be outside of this set, but it's sort of the maximum number, the highest number that is less than any other number in this set, 0, 1. Okay, this is what infimum is. All right, the infimum of a set is the highest number uh, that is less than uh, all the numbers in this set, 0, 1. So highest number that is less than 0, 1 is 0 itself. But because it's not in this interval, uh, it's not min, but it's the inf, okay? So that's the difference between inf and min. And supremum versus max is uh, working exactly the same way. So therefore, I don't know if this set is an open set, closed set, compact, I don't know it. So therefore, I, I take the infimum. So, Infimum, the smallest possible epsilon, where epsilon core of the game G is non-empty. All right, so that's what we really look. 
Well, if we go back to our example where there are three players and the worth of each coalition is one if the coalition has two or more members and zero otherwise, if you remember, we said there is going to be no stable allocation in this game. However, this payoff vector is, for example, one third. So epsilon is one third, uh, one third core of this game G. All right. And in fact, if you calculate any epsilon core of this game G, you'll see that all of those sets are going to be empty uh, if epsilon is less than 1 over 3. All right. So epsilon has to be at least one third so that epsilon core of G is non-empty. So that means basically for this game, epsilon star G is one third. Okay. Um, so, well, I mean, again, it's not uh, sort of the perfect solution in the sense that some coalitions still have incentive to deviate, but at least uh, we can find um, a payoff vector and some outcome where the incentive to deviate is the least, in a sense. Okay, that's how, uh, that's what the epsilon core is aiming to capture.